Hey everybody, Dr. Nicholas Thomas here with the School of Hospitality Leadership at DePaul University. Thanks so much for joining us today on the second episode of The Hospitality Spirit, recorded live in the Driehaus College of Business in downtown Chicago. I'm really excited today to be joined by Paul Daly with Hyatt Hotels. Paul is also the chairman of our advisory board and executive in residence here in the School of Hospitality Leadership. I hope you enjoy. Paul, thanks so much for being here today. Great to be here. So, Paul, there are so many things that we can talk about today, uh, but I really want to be cognizant of your schedule and try to compress this into a, maybe about a 30, 45 minute discussion. And um, really, we'll kind of cover a wide variety of topics. But, but what I really, you and I have known each other for a couple of years. And the thing that I always appreciate is you have such a passion for the hospitality industry. You have such a passion for the educational experience of hospitality students. You're involved in uh, several hospitality programs. You went to hospitality school. We'll talk a little bit about that. But what I want to start with is is maybe just a, an overview of who is Paul Daly now, yeah. and then we can work backwards and then head off on a couple little tangents. Okay, great. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, really thrilled, thrilled to be here. Um, so currently, as you said, uh, I am uh, with Hyatt. I am 28 years with Hyatt, going on on 29. Uh, But my current role is at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare, where I'm the area vice president and GM, uh, which gives me the opportunity to work not only with O'Hare, but with six other hotels kind of throughout the middle of the country. I've got a hotel in Toronto, one in Baltimore, Columbus, Louisville, Cleveland. Um, So it's really neat experience for me because I, you know, I've got about 600 colleagues at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare, but I also now have outreach to some of these other hotels and um, gives me really a great opportunity to connect with folks, uh, go to different hotels, see what they're doing, uh, hopefully add some benefit to those hotels, but in the same breath, to be honest with you, a lot of times I'll I'll see things at their hotels and take them back to mine. So um, it's been, uh, I've been at O'Hare now about eight months. It's been a great experience so far. So when I first met you, I I was thinking back uh, actually last night as I was preparing for this and one word really just kept coming up in my mind when I, when I thought about you and that was hotelier that, that you, you are really in an embodiment of starting on the ground floor and really working your way up in the hospitality industry and more specifically the lodging industry. Take us back to your time in school and really not a lot of detail per se, but but how does one get from hospitality school to where you're at today? Wow, great question. I mean, I, I would take a little bit of a step back. I think an important part in my life was, you know, my family had a restaurant growing up. And so um, I think hospitality for me was just something that was, uh, it wasn't even second nature, it was kind of just part of the way I grew up. And so um, when I went to school, I went to Virginia Tech, and I was an engineering major for the first two years. And after uh, your sophomore year in engineering, you have to kind of declare what type of engineering you're going to specialize in. Um, and I remember Nick sitting around the kitchen table with my mom and dad and trying to – and I should tell you my older brother was an industrial engineer, went to Virginia Tech, and so – I kept trying to see where my fit was going to be, and I couldn't find it. And it was my mom who said to me, you always love being in a restaurant. And our restaurant had closed at that point. Um, Maybe that's something you should think about. And it was as if at that moment there was a click in my head, and I knew that that she was absolutely right. Um, And when I went back to school, uh, I went and met with the dean of the hospitality school at Tech at the time. a guy named Dr. Mike Olson, um, and I remember him saying, uh, he, I remember he said something to the effect of, well, you're the first engineering student that's not flunking out of engineering that wants to come to the hospitality program. Um, but, you know, he said something to me that I always remember. He said, look, if you're going to come here, um, you need to stand out. I want to be sure that I can always um, know what you're doing and the impact that you're going to have. And so for me, um, Having really important people in your life that can help influence you in a positive way is, is really critical. Obviously, my parents played a big role in that, but Dr. Olson did as well. Um, and throughout the next two years, as I went on my hospitality journey at, at Virginia Tech, um, 
he was the first to check in on me and make sure I was doing all the right things. And um, he really um, made a big difference in, in how I developed as a as a young man and uh, kind of went into my discovery of, of the world of hospitality. I really like that standout comment. If you had some, if you were talking to us, I mean, I would give the same advice to a hospitality student here at DePaul. Um, the same advice was maybe not the exact same verbiage, but it was kind of a, there was an implicit understanding when I went to hotel school that, that that was important. How did you stand out when you were at Tech? Yeah, well, I think the the thing that I think that I'm good at, right? I don't think I'm good at brains. I don't mean that, you know, I'm not trying to sound super humble here. My strength has always been enthusiasm and uh, I'm kind of an all-in person. So whatever I'm doing, uh, I really like to be kind of all in. And so um, I can remember, you know, when I started my junior year in the hospitality program, um, I think a lot of the kids that that I I was uh, going to school with were great students and great kids, but I'm not sure they really had the passion for hospitality. I know some of them since found that bug and have been very successful in their careers. I, I'm staying in touch with a number of them. Um, but it's the same thing I would say, Nick, today when I talk to young managers in, in the hotel, when they say, how do I be successful? I, it's the same message I give to them is you've got to be all in every day. And what I really encourage people to do is don't be singular in your approach. So if you're the assistant restaurant manager in a hotel or in a a less than 10 year restaurant, that's great. Whatever those responsibilities are, that's terrific. But you need to be bigger than that, right? Um, One of the things, I think one of the skills I've always had or characters, characteristics I should say is I'm very competitive. And so when I get into an environment, I like to always try and do everything I can to be the best that I can be. Um, and so I try and do more than just what's in front of me. And I say the same thing to the young managers I work with at O'Hare as an example. Uh, assistant restaurant, restaurant manager is great, but why don't you become a member of the safety committee? And what can you do? Associate relations committee. Broaden your horizons within the organization, not just with the job that you have, but think more importantly about the one that you want to get. Um, and for me at Virginia Tech, what that meant was I got involved in so many different things. I was also a member of the Corps of Cadets there, which was made me unique. I guess I stood out in general because I was in a uniform every day, and I was the only cadet in, in the program. Um, but past that, I really tried to be involved in a lot of things. And, and when you get in, involved in a lot of things, what happens organically is you meet a ton of people. And you never know who you're, is in front of you and the influence they could have on you. They could be your future boss. They could be someone that connects you with your future boss. Um, so, yeah, I definitely am all about, uh, you know, bringing enthusiasm and passion to the game every day uh, and trying to engage with as many people as you can. Because, in essence, think about what the basis of hospitality is. It, 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 it's that, right? It, it's making connections with people, whether you're a guest uh, or your colleagues. So, I think... I was talking to some uh, some high school seniors uh, over the weekend who are considering coming to DePaul and kind of considering what their college experience might be like. And I kept bringing up a constant theme when for students, particularly students studying hospitality, is that a lot of what they do is about self-exploration, mm-hmm. that the hospitality industry is such a, a broad industry. There are so many different directions that people can go. And you see somebody maybe going down one path, and it's totally, it's sometimes encouraged even to maybe either back up or go in a completely different direction and try something else. So I think that idea of getting involved a lot in school, that's the perfect time for students to really explore what excites them. I think some of them come into hospitality programs and they say, I want to go work in a big box hotel or I want to work in a fine dining restaurant. And that is their, that is their understanding about that. And we as teachers in the classroom can only impart so much additional knowledge on them. On them, A lot of the ways they do that is joining clubs, picking up internships, part-time jobs, full-time jobs. And maybe they know, I want to go work in hotels, but there are so many different options about the level of service and then the companies. I mean, I've, I've really have, have started to appreciate in the last 10 years as – hospitality organizations start to create lots of brands within their portfolios in the lodging industry. Just the variability of the employee experience that exists. And and going to college and learning about hospitality is a really great time to start to understand that. 
Yeah, I mean, I think your comments are dead on because you never want to pigeonhole yourself, right? You always want to have options. And, you know, even, you know, you know, I have two sons. I have one who's a, a senior in college and one about to begin his college journey. And, you know, you, you mentioned internships. To me, that is like, it's like a working interview. It gives you the opportunity to have a it's no harm, no foul kind of experience to really explore not only the positions that you might be interested in, but to your point, to explore different companies and see what their culture is. And look, I'm, as you know, I'm 20 years with Hyatt. I, I believe in Hyatt. It's a great organization. Doesn't mean there aren't great organizations out there different than Hyatt. And so the more that you, especially I think for, for college students, the more that they can broaden their horizons and get out there and experience what it is. Um, I, to me, the most important thing, when, when I see, um, young people fail, right? I hate to spend some time on something negative here. When I see someone fail in our industry, it's not because they weren't smart enough or they didn't work hard. Uh, they weren't, you know, they didn't bring their game every day. It's because they didn't want to be there in the first place, right? It's about finding your fit. And that that is, finding your fit happens on many levels. It's the job you want to be in. It's the city you want to be in. It's the company you want to be with. So the more you know, legwork you can do as a student to help find your fit, I think it's invaluable. And that might mean, like you did, starting in food and beverage and then going to hotel ops. I mean, that that might be, and a lot of these organizations that we see in hospitality and tourism today really offer that almost to your analogy of finding something that fits, like a shoe store. Yeah. Just try on lots of different shoes. Try on maybe a little bit of time in room service, maybe a little bit of time in housekeeping, a little bit of time in meeting and events. And you might find at the end of that, you say, I want to work in a small hotel in a major metropolitan area, a guest contact position that's going to allow me to not do the same thing every day. I mean, you can get down to that granular level of detail, but only going out there and experiencing it, whether as a customer or whether as an employee, can really help you start to do that. You can't. You, you can read about a little bit in a textbook, but you got to get out there and you got to experience it. Yeah, I, I agree 100. percent And to me, I mean, again, I love everything you're saying because the, the best news here is you can change your mind, right? I mean, so you can start your career going one direction and then realize, hey, I'm going to alter it and go. I mean, think about. Uh, I, I could tell you how many people come to our industry that have an accounting degree or a political science degree, they didn't really intend to be in hospitality. Um, they were going to be a teacher or something. And then all of a sudden, you know, a lot of times, a lot of stories that I hear are, are kids that are in college and they get a job in hospitality just as a job. And then all of a sudden they realize, wow, this is a pretty amazing career, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, you know, one of the things I always thought about early in my career was I looked at a general manager of a hotel and I thought, wow, that's interesting. And my, and my dad actually said to me one day, he goes, you know, Paul, the thing about being a GM of a big hotel, it's almost like being a mayor of a city because you've got all these different functional areas that you get to be involved with every day. So whether it's the sales organization or event services or uh, the kitchen, culinary, stewarding, marketing and so as I thought about that and thought, boy, that's something maybe that I should aspire to, the great news about that, any job that I took from that point forward was only going to kind of build this platform for me of, of becoming a general manager because you do need kind of you know, experience in the different disciplines within an organization. And my first job with Hyde actually, you know, I was a trainee first, their corporate management training program was actually in the accounting function, you know, because that's what was available at the time. And I knew I'd found an organization that I liked. And I knew that I didn't want to be a director of finance, but I thought, okay, this is the next step. I'm going to learn from this and then I'll create an opportunity for me, uh, you know, eight months, 12 months later. And I was, all of a sudden I was the assistant executive steward. So, um, being focused, I think one of the things too, Nick, I always tell kids is have a goal, right? And I think more importantly, have two goals, right? So what's your sh kind of short-term thinking from a goal perspective? And then what's your long-term thinking? And again, both those things can change, right? You don't have to be so uptight about getting there, but as, you, as you're working on your short-term, you're either going to solidify what your long-term thinking is, or you're going to be able to adjust and say, okay, I'm going to shift this way a little bit. Um, and I think one of the things that we don't underscore enough in the hospitality industry is, I think you alluded to earlier, there's so many different opportunities within, I mean, you can be, a, you can have a finance 
uh, focus. You can get into sales and human resources is a great field. So it's not just being a front desk agent and a front office manager. There's so much other opportunity there, which is great. So one of the things that I've always enjoyed about you, Paul, particularly in a uh, in an environment where there's lots of people is your ability to communicate effectively mm-hmm. and your ability to network. Yeah. Uh, you serve as chairman of our advisory board uh, in the School of Hospitality Leadership. So there clearly is a, a, a communication and a networking aspect to that. Yeah. And when I, when I talk to students today, that's, that is probably the single biggest or one of the biggest concerns that they have is they're an introvert. They're kind of shy. They don't know a lot of people. They don't have this massive Rolodex. Uh, They may have a lot of Instagram followers, Facebook friends, and uh, connect with a lot of people on social media. But actually getting in front of somebody and learning how to network and engage, that's a huge part of hospitality. And somebody told me when I was in hotel school once, they said it's it's not necessarily about what you know. It's about who you know yeah. and how you foster and develop those relationships that will really pay dividends, maybe not in the short term, but to your point, the long term, those relationships. And it's that might be the person that calls you up one day and says, I have this job offer, or can you write a recommendation, or hey, you're in this city. Uh, are you involved with this professional association? Can you do some introductions? Can you talk just a little bit about maybe – the role of networking, why you think it's important, and maybe a few strategies that students today, as they're listening to this, could start to, to employ. Yeah, first of all, I couldn't agree with you more on this. I mean, I definitely feel like, um, well, I'll say I worry about technology, Nick. I worry about, I mean, you, you walk down the street and everyone's face is in their phone, right? Um, and I get that, right? Technology is really important, and we all live and die by text and email. I'm, I'm no different. Um, but you're never going to build a meaningful relationship through an email. It's just not going to happen, right? It uh, doesn't mean you can't convey a message back and forth with technology, but to really create a connection with someone, that's going to happen face-to-face. So to me, right, and I can tell you, even though I'm, I've always been a little bit outgoing, um, I can remember in, in college and, and having being hesitant about joining the club or doing those uh, networking events that we would have sometimes. What I would encourage students to do is just, you know, step off that ledge and do it, right? Just take the leap. Take the leap. And you know what? Um, be the person that if you're standing there and there's that awkward moment where you're kind of by yourself, well, you can change that by going and introducing yourself to someone, you know, walk up to someone and hold your hand out and say, hi, I'm Paul Daly. Um, how are you? And what some people forget is is so many people have that exact same fear. And exactly. and they sometimes think, you know, I'm an introvert. No, no one has this social phobia like me. And the reality is most people do. Yeah. Most people feel really awkward going into a room of people they don't know and just walking up to someone. So that fear and that those sweaty palms and, and that weird tenseness in your stomach, most people have that when they go into an environment like that. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's the same as I can remember the class I hated the most in college was public speaking, right? I mean, until today, I've done a ton of public speaking. I've given speeches in front of big crowds. Even today, I still get nervous about it. But I will say this, the more I do it, the easier it gets. And it's the same with, you know, being that person doesn't know a lot and holding your hand out and meeting folks. And here's the other message. Whether you're in hospitality or whatever field you know, because the same may be true. Someone will be here at DePaul, have it be a great kid, great in hospitality, and their life may take them a different direction. That's okay. But guess what? That ability to connect is going to be still important regardless of what industry they're in. Um, so, yeah, I definitely, and, and my same advice for, for the kids at DePaul, the same as my managers at O'Hare, is broaden your horizons. Um, be, there's a term we use in Hyatt called aggressive hospitality, and that means Don't wait for someone to, uh, don't wait for the opportunity to present itself to you to be hospitable to someone. Go out and create that opportunity. It's anticipatory. Yeah, you know, a proactive approach, you know. Um, We say it all the time. We have a program in the hotel we call Lobby Ambassador. I'm sure you've had in the future where we, or in the past, excuse me, where we just have, you know, a shift where managers require for the next half hour. Your only job is going to be you're going to stand in the lobby and you're going to talk to guests. Um, and it may be as simple as welcoming them to the hotel or helping them find their guest room or solving a problem for them. 
Um, but that skill set, that ability to make those connections, as I said in the very beginning, is only going to happen in that that face-to-face reaction. So the other thing I would tell you, here's an important piece. As you become a senior, right, what happens next? You've got to interview. Uh, and what happens in an interview, right? You're in that one-on-one circumstance and you've got to make that connection. So my advice is get good at it when it doesn't matter so that when it does matter, you're more comfortable. And going in and joining clubs and going to career fairs and recruiting events your career is not necessarily on the line. You're not necessarily being evaluated in your performance there, but my goodness, what great practice yeah. that is. Yep. And I think there's a time and a place for understanding um, how to interact in a virtual environment, but one of the things that's never going to go away in hospitality, you can, you can have all the robots in the world delivering your room service and all the, the kiosks to check into a hotel. It's never not going to be about the people when you look at that equation of what makes successful hospitality organizations. And that people, it's how humans interact. Yep. And it's not necessarily how you interact with someone that has a very similar background to you. It's how do you interact with somebody maybe who comes from a very different background than you? How do you interact with somebody that maybe their native language is not the same as yours? Um, I suspect in your hotel um, – in terms of its proximity, you deal with a lot of guests who are coming in off an airplane where they've been sitting on an airplane for 16 hours. This is their first time in the United States. They walk up to the front desk. All they really know is they have a confirmed reservation and they've heard about this company, Hyatt. And everything else for them is a brand new experience. And you probably see that on a daily basis day, yeah. in hospitality and at, at your hotel. So I, I can't stress to students enough the idea that it's really great to hang out with people who have similar interests to you. That's a, that's a big part of life. But being able to also put yourself outside of that comfort zone a little bit in interaction, it's so important to do. And practice, practice, practice. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I think the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, and even let's assume for a second that let's, let's just say you get into hospitality and you're not in a department or a position that's what we call front of the house where you're engaging with guests every day. You're still going to engage with other colleagues. And I could make the argument to you those relationships are just as, if not more important, than the ones that are ha- happening between our colleagues and the guests. So it's a skill set that, that has to be developed. The other piece I'd throw out here I, I think is important to note when you're getting involved in these other uh, clubs, organizations, whatever it is, if you have the opportunity to take a leadership role, I would really encourage it, right? For all the same reasons we just talked about. Um, because I would suggest to you that the ability to lead and inspire people every single day um, is a skill set that takes a long time to develop. So the simple message is the sooner you start working on developing that leadership profile for whatever that is, whatever that means to you, um, the better off you're going to be. One of the questions I get all the time, well, you know, what? tell me about your leadership style. And I always say, I'll tell you, but what my leadership style isn't, isn't important is what is your leader, what's going to be effective for you? Um, and, and for me, like I said, the opportunity to be the treasurer in some club may not sound like a big deal, but guess what? You're going to be dealing with problems and solving issues and in, engaging with folks and you know, the more you do that, the better the better developed you're going to be when you actually have your first leadership job that matters. So I'm, I'd like to say that there's a recruiting season in hospitality, but the reality is this is a 24-7, 365. It isn't, uh, we don't necessarily, while most of our students will graduate uh, in the spring and head off into industry, there are students that are literally listening to this right now who are interviewing for jobs in hospitality, who potentially have offers and they're looking at multiple offers simultaneously and they're trying to figure out which one to take. You've been with Hyatt for quite a while and I, and I don't necessarily want to, while it's a wonderful company, I want to speak in more broad terms. What are some of the things that you would advise people entering this industry as a career, kind of post-academics, so post Paul or post wherever they are, what are some of the things that you think that they should be looking for in a, in a company 
not necessarily in the duties of the job. I think a front desk agent from one hotel to another, there's not massive amounts of variation. Yeah. The concept and the job description, the essential functions are relatively the same. But hotel company A versus hotel company B, sometimes there's a huge variation in that. And while we, while we can identify leaders in the industry and the way that they treat employees, it's still important to understand that there's a difference. Yeah. I mean, what, what would you advise students today that are trying to figure out the important question, company A or company B or company C? Yeah. So a couple of things. First, I would say, um, we kind of talked about it earlier, the, the best teacher is experience. Um, and the best way to get, a know a comp- to get to know a company is that internship opportunity. So I would really, if, if you have a few companies that you're thinking about, and, and you know, you're still kind of maybe sophomore, junior working towards and in the midst of internships, I would definitely put those on your list to try and get exposed to that. But assuming now you're kind of at the finish line and you're trying to figure out wh- which is the best way to go, um, I, I would say a couple of things. One, um, you know, I think a lot of times in business school, there's this I- the idea that you've got to separate your personal life and your business life. And that's just not reality, right? That you're personal life and your and your professional life are intertwined and, and rightfully so. So I would I would encourage students to consider that, right? Uh, and so when they're assessing companies, knowing what maybe some of their personal preferences are, you know, maybe someone wants to, hey, I want to stay in Chicago. I don't want to leave Chicago. Well, that should be a factor then of the company you may select because then I would say to you, okay, if you want to be in Chicago, which company is going to offer you the greatest opportunity here in the city of Chicago, right? Selfishly, Hyde be a great company. Just <laughs> yeah, just throwing that out. Um, but I, but I, the reason I think that's important is because I think um, balance is really important, right? And you know, you, I think you're going to be most successful if you have an environment that you're can be professionally happy and personally happy. And that's a hard thing to do, right? But I, all I'm suggesting is you you should consider that as you assess these companies. And that's and that's really interesting. Just to, to stop you real sure. quick, I mean we. That I think that that idea has maybe evolved over time. That that was a that wasn't necessarily a top priority when I was in hotel school. It it it, it wasn't admittedly, and I don't think it was a product of the school that I went to. I don't think it was. I think it was more just the approach to work life balance and how you fit personally with an organization has evolved. And I think that's actually a good thing. Yeah. I, I think that means that you. That, that becomes that presents a, a unique challenge, but an important challenge on the part of the company to actually be able to convey that. Yeah. To, to and and so so many so often in the past we saw recruiters that all they did was focus on the job, but it's it's more focusing on what work life balance. How do you fit into the culture of the organization? Yeah. That's a re, that's a recruiting strategy. You have to be able to convey that in the in the message to applicants. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, I love the conversation about work life balance because. To me, Nick, if you find the right job, you're going to work more than you're, than you're probably supposed to because you love you love what you're doing. And so, again, it goes back to my comment where finding that fit and, and that that personal connection with the company, but also the idea that you're in a role that is fulfilling to you, um, is really important. And, and let me say this: you may not get this first time out of the gate, right? I mean, um, that's like a, the best case scenario. You might get a little bit here and a little bit there, but um, I wouldn't get so caught up on, um, you know, getting the exact job you want first time out of, out of school. But if you have a, you know, if you have a couple of priorities and you can t- tick off half of them and say, hey, you know what, this job probably fits a lot of these things, to me, then, then it's worth evaluating. The other thing I would say is if you have the opportunity, uh, and I'm going to go back to the networking piece, but if you can talk to people that actually work in that organization, and have a real heart to heart about. Tell me what it's like working for for Marriott or for uh, Hilton or for Hyatt. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Um, I think that is the best because in an interview situation, um, you're always going to put on your best performance. Well, well, guess what? So is the company that's trying to interview and, and potentially recruit you. Um, so the more homework you do now, kind of leading up to the interview process, the better. But the other thing I would say is, the when I have interviewed a ton of people, and when I see someone at an interview, uh, you know, I usually will do the traditional, let's tell me about yourself, strength, and all that. And then at the end, I always say, well, what questions do you have? And I bet you one out of 10 actually have 
well thought out questions where I can really tell, but they've really put some thought into that, you know, and that in itself impresses me that someone is really coming. They're being very serious about this. And one of the things I always tell someone, um, if I'm getting ready to offer someone a job, I give them the same fit conversation we've already had. Look, as much as we're interviewing you to see if you fit our organization, you're interviewing us to see if we fit you. And I'm more worried about your feeling of fit than mine, because I'm going to I don't want to say I'm going to make you fit, but we'll get you trained. We'll, we'll get you in a spot where you can be have the opportunity to be successful. But again, back to what I said earlier, when people aren't successful, it's a lot of the times because, again, they didn't want to be there in the first place. So really doing your homework and finding your fit, I, I can't stress enough. And that, I think a lot of times what, what we really strive for organizations to do, and in my conversations with students, what I think they're really looking for is – a realistic job preview. That, that we, we do the same thing with customers, with our external customers. If somebody's thinking about coming to stay at our hotel, they're thinking about having an event at our hotel, they want to come to our restaurant, what do they do? They go out and they do research. They, they look at the menus online. They look at sample pictures of what the grand ballroom looks like when we're going to do a huge wedding there. They you know, when people buy airline tickets, they go on to Seat Guru and try to figure out what is it actually going to be like in Seat 16C verse 21A. Right. We have to think about that, I think, as an industry with, with the students today, is how can we convey that in our recruiting message? How can we provide a realistic preview of what your life is going to be like? Because it's a huge – it's a life choice to, to go to work for this organization or that organization – and the best organizations who can convey that realistic preview, recruiting is much easier. Yeah. And from, a, from a, a job applicant perspective, making that decision is also much easier. I mean, you give me as much, give me the good and give me the bad. Yeah. Let, me know, let me know what you would enhance, what you would improve, do your homework. And I think that, that it makes that decision a little bit easier. Yeah. I, I, you know, for me, the, the, the idea of being completely honest in – the recruitment process on both sides is one of the most important parts of, of success, right? Um, I want to be as honest as I can as someone that may be employing someone to tell them, here's what the wor- your world's going to be. So if you're going to be the assistant bar manager, um, get ready to work nights and weekends. And if that doesn't, if you can't get your head around that, that's okay, right? But this is not the opportunity for you. Um, you know, in the same breath, if someone comes to me and is here with me and says, look, uh, I love your organization. I want to get going with you, but you know, I'm, I want to get my master's degree, so I need I need nights off. Well, that may be something I can accommodate, or I can't accommodate. But at least we're working that out on the front end. Um, so there's a real truth in the identity of what each person is bringing to the table, right? Even if there's bad aspects of a job, if I know about those bad aspects going in, I'm a more inf- I make it a more informed decision. And every decision you make there is a risk associated with it. But what can we start to do in the minds of the applicants to mitigate that risk as much as possible? That I've always took the approach with people that I was managing or colleagues, that there really shouldn't be a lot of surprises. That, yeah, you're going to get the customer experience. A guest comes up to you and they present a really unique scenario, maybe that you haven't heard in a while. But for the most part, we're not, it's not to use an engineering term, it's not rocket science right. here. Right. That at its core, we're trying to li- deliver really great experiences for both our internal and our external customers. Yeah. And at its core, that's what hospitality is about. Yeah, I, the way I say it all the time is, is it's about creating value, right? So how do you create value for your fellow colleagues? How do you create value for yourself within the organization? And then most importantly, how do you create value for the guests that's there, right? I mean, you know, just you talked about the airlines earlier, right? So you get on a flight, everyone paid a different price for the plane ticket, right? No matter what to see, there's just because of the way that the pricing works. The same exists in the hotel industry. But guess what? The experience needs to be the same. And so what we say all the time, you know, the guest that you may be talking to, and I have no idea what rate that guest is paying. They could be paying three ninety nine a night or $99 a night. I don't know. But the way I engage and the value proposition I'm trying to create with them through my engagement with them is critically important, Right. Again, it goes back to something we talked about earlier and that, that ability to make connections. And, you know, with a guest, you may have 
you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to make that connection and have them feel good about it. And a lot of that, to me, is your ability to be sincere and authentic in the way you engage, right? If you're dealing with a guest, maybe they're sharing a compliment or maybe they have a problem. Either way, if you're authentic in your approach, you're, you're looking them in the eye and they get the sense that you really care about what they're saying, that's half the battle, right? And that's half the battle. Well, Paul, thank you so much for being here today. We covered a lot of things today. Um, what I really liked is that we started off with how you as a student in your academic experience, if you're attending hospitality school or, or whatever your major or minor might be, that you make a point to stand out, that what you learn in the classroom is important, but also make an effort to get involved in this co-curricular activities, stand out. What we also kind of talked about is all organizations differ, all different jobs in hospitality are different in their own unique way, but if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. That it is, there are so many opportunities that exist in here, and it doesn't mean that you have to move up to that general manager or vice president role in an organization. There are plenty of opportunities that exist um, that, that maybe aren't in that leadership capacity that can still you can still approach with enthusiasm, and you can still find extremely rewarding. Paul, again, thank you so much for taking some time today. This has been The Hospitality Spirit, recorded live in downtown Chicago in the School of Hospitality Leadership, which is housed with inside the Driehaus College of Business at DePaul University.